guys are not the favorites in the Big Ten this yeah. year. Does it mean anything to you? Can you use his motivation? Yeah, I look back at 19, it was the same way. Um, you know, we, we didn't win the last game, so you know, probably don't deserve to be. Uh, not that it really matters, like you said, but at the same time, you know, we, you know, we're going to come up with a chip on our shoulder. Um, but ultimately, as you know, it's, it comes down to a full rank again in the season. This is, you typically kind of pick the starting quarterback maybe two or three weeks in the fall camp. Is there maybe a similar timeline this time around? That's what you know we were talking about earlier. Ideally, that's what we'd like to do. That's what we've done. You guys have seen that. We've done that um, the last few times with named quarterbacks. But that's because somebody emerged. You know, if someone doesn't emerge, we'll have to figure it out from there. But that's that's the one. Can you can, can, can Ryan? Can can you define though? Is it is it super tight between Kyle and Devin coming out of the spring and what you've seen in in the summer? Or how would you describe it? Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's it's a close battle for sure. Yeah, I mean, and they're both going to be competing to play. It's not like you know we have an incumbent. It's not uh, you know you think about the last few competitions. Yeah. Um, and certainly, D- Dwayne and Joe was in the spring, and that that um, you know shook out a certain way. But really, when you talk about Justin and CJ and you know, th- those 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 were a little bit different. This one this one's close, and so these guys are going to continue to battle. And um, you know, Kyle wants to be the starter. This is why he's hung around here for three years. Yeah, and, and Devin came here to play as well. Um, so I, I think the big thing is they, they have to do a great job of competing. But we need that room to be great. This is one of the first times you know that we we've been here. We have depth in that room, and so we're going to need that whole room. And you know, we, we know the stories of you know we need everybody in that room. Yeah. Um, you know, for instance, you know, when, when Justin was there and when CJ was there and we didn't have a lot of depth, you had to be very, very careful about running the quarterback. Maybe this year we have an opportunity to do some more things like that because we have more depth in that room. You know, yeah. and you think about the times when there has been depth at the quarterback position, we've been more inclined to do some things like that. So we'll take all those things into consideration, but we need that room to play at championship level. Coach, what excites you about the way you're recruiting in this 24 cycle right now? Yeah, yeah it's, it's going really well. You know, we made some adjustments in a lot of different areas. And, um, you know, it's, it's a long way all the way to signing day, and there's ups and downs along the way, but I think we're identifying the right people for us. Um, you're seeing another you know, good cross section of, of, of talent in different parts of the country. Um, certainly, Ohio has been big for us, and and hear here, here soon from some different guys. But uh, we're excited about where we're at, and you know we think you know. And, and listen, the rankings are what they are, but we want to sign the best class for Ohio State. I feel like we're doing that. We got a lot of momentum, a lot of good guys in the class right now. It'll be fun to see them compete this fall. One final one. You said adjustments. What adjustments? Uh, would you- would you say you But just with the landscape, you know, of, of everything that's going on with NIL, with our team. So, you know, I think a lot of recruits are seeing what's going on with our team, how we're doing things. And you know, there's been a lot of change, you know, since all that legislation happened. Right now, certainly, uh, you know, we've, we've done a great job of making adjustments and making sure that, you know, our guys are getting what's fair. Something that was really hard when it all happened. It all happened fast. And, you know, hard for he, hard for his mom. But... Uh, you know, I think the, you know, they felt like it was a blessing to be at Ohio State, to have the James right there, to be able to be in his dorm and go get his treatment. He's a private person, so it's not something that he wanted to kind of talk a lot about, but he had a whole team behind him, and, uh, and he's, he's fought it, you know. But he had to have a procedure done that'll make it, um, you know, virtually impossible to play football, you know. Um, I won't get into all that right now, but... Um, but he's still part of the program. He's still with the team, you know, uh, just like we have a couple guys like that. Then, um, you know, he's got a whole team that's going to behind him, going to be behind him. And, you know, he's in remission, which is great. But, you know, there's still a lot of things that come with that. And, and so uh, we're very, very proud of him for fighting, you know, for, for really living our culture of the fight. And, um, you know, we're going to see him here in the fall, and he's still going to be a part of it and everything and the best he can. But, um, yeah, I know it's not easy for him that he won't play football again. That's that's something that's been a part of his life. Right, Marvin, Marvin said that uh, he's been he's been amazed to a certain extent how Carnell Tate has handled the situation, you know, losing his mom the way he has. But uh, the travel all of uh, bonded with him, uh, been around him, offered him support. But how tough a situation was that? Yeah, um, I got the call at 6 a.m. about about Ashley, and uh, it was not easy for anybody, but. Uh, certainly for Carnell, you know, he and, he and his mom are very close. And you know, when you lose somebody close to you like that, it just takes takes the rug out from underneath you. And I know that happened to Carnell. 
Um, you know, he does have a team that's here to support him. You know, we were all kind of surrounded him and, and try to help him the best you can. He was a pretty private person as well. Uh, and, you know, I, I think part of the process when you're in that situation, we've had guys who have gone through similar situations and um, you have to go through a, a, a process of grieving. And, and we've talked about that. And um, again, that's not easy. But I think football is, is allowed him a distraction to kind of get his mind off of it when, when he's not in his in his room or, or back in Chicago. Oh yeah, yeah. Carson um, is competing to be the the starting center. Um, he's had a very good off season. He's very talented. Um, has uh, the athleticism. Has the intelligence. Um, does not have the experience, but um, you know he's a guy that you know we projected to have an opportunity to start this year. He's going to have to go earn a spot. You know he hasn't earned it yet, but um, there's a lot of you know things that lead us to believe he could do that, and we're going to need him to. You know we're going to need some guys to step up in the offensive line, and Carson has a bright future ahead of him. Ryan, you guys brought in Lorenzo and Tyler this What have them? Um, yeah, uh, Lorenzo brings in, uh, first off, he understands what it means to be a Buckeye because he grew up in Columbus. His brother's on the team. Uh, you know, we recruited him as, as a corner to start with. And, you know, he wanted to try wide receiver at Notre Dame. You know, he's since come back and said, I should, probably should have listened to you guys at the beginning. But, but that's part of his journey, I told him. And um, he's come in and really you can see how competitive he is. If you said, give me one word to describe Lorenzo, I would say that he's competitive. I mean, he's there every day. He's trying to win every drill, and that's been a big part of our offseason is the competing part of it. So he's really flourished in that area. He's got really good speed. He's learning to play a new position. But if you just look at the skill set and what, um, you know, just moving around and learning the defense, um, it, it's, it's been exciting to see somebody. Now he's played on, um, you know, played you know, on offense, and so he has experience in games. That, that has to mean something. You know, I think he'd be able to contribute on special teams early on and then hopefully find a role as the season rolls on. Did you envision the transfer portal giving you guys or players kind of a second chance at, at schools like that? You've had a couple guys that you've recruited, that gone somewhere else, maybe played a different position, come back, now uh, another one there. Did, was that something you thought might happen with the transfer portal? Yeah, we, we talk about that. that um, and, and not that we ever did. When, when you lose a recruit, you know, you always kind of stay in touch with them. But you just never know nowadays you know so many guys go in the portal you know you, you got to you know keep staying keeping in communication with them during the recruiting process and so that when they do go to a school if they decide to go back in the portal there's still a really good um, relationship there and they know and so uh, it's kind of strange to talk about but yeah you, you, you have to kind of um, you know let's say someone commits in the summer and they're going to go somewhere you just still want to kind of stay in touch with their family throughout the fall stay in touch with their coach you know show them that respect and, and maybe it pays off down the road Ryan, this is his second year for, for Jim Knowles. What do you need and expect to see from him and his defense yep. in camp? Yeah, I, I think we have, again, we talked about this before, more experience than we've had in a while there. So uh, we have to get guys ready to play. But we, we've, you know, the bottom line is we got to play with aggressiveness. we got to play physical. we got to win games on defense. But we we got to avoid the big plays. So, um, you know, how does that all tie together? I think that's the critical part of it. But... Uh, we're looking for physicality in preseason to answer your question. You know, we, we need guys who are playing downhill, we're playing fast, we got to win the line of scrimmage. You know, the defensive line's got to play physical. In order to do that, I, I think, you know, JT, Jack, Mike, Tyleek, Ty, uh, Kenyatta, they, they, they got to take on, you know, the majority of the reps. You know, we've rotated guys in the past, the D-line, but, but these guys have, have got to be guys that we can count on to play the majority of games. And, you know, like we say, carry the water. I mean, they're the ones that gotta, gotta do it up front. And it all starts with the guys up there. In the spring, they did. Running back room. Uh, Coach, how are you going to just select the two best players versus maybe mixing and matching based on skill sets versus games? Well, one of the things we're most excited about is having a healthy Travion back. Uh, you know, he really didn't get a chance to see a healthy Travion last year. He had a healthy buy in. So that, that's exciting. Chip has had a great offseason. Um, you know, Dallin's had a good offseason. Evan, you know, you know, you have five guys in that room. And then we had Xavier Johnson as well, who played some running back for us down the stretch. So 
like you said, you know, you can't play all six at once, but, um, you know, we're going to try to find creative ways to get guys in the game and get them touches. And uh, it's a long season, so, you know, we feel like we're going to need them all. Ryan, do you feel like you guys are entering camp with Josh Fryer and Josh Simmons as your starting tackles, or is that still undecided? I think it's still undecided. Um, for Josh, you know, he's just getting here, so he, he we need to see what we got on the field. You know, we don't know. We, we see a lot of talent, um, but... You know, Ohio State's different. You know, this is a different offense. This is everything about it's different. So we need to see that, although we're encouraged with what we see. Um, you know, Tegra has done some good things in the offseason. Um, you know, and then Luke Montgomery, I've been very impressed with him. So I think we have some good candidates there, but now they got to go compete, and it's going to come down to what they look like in the preseason. So um, there's no more waiting around. they got to go. Um, what draw, drew you guys to Josh Simmons when you were looking at it? What we were looking at, um, you know, when you lost Paris, you know, in, in the third year, usually you usually don't lose too many offensive linemen after three years. Paris is a special case, and that left a hole there um, that we had to fill. And so, you know, anybody, anytime we had tackles in the transfer portal, we we looked long and hard at them, um, you know, watched their film and tried to identify that, brought them in, um, you know, and, and, you know, tried to you know do the best we could and find the best candidate for what we're looking for. And sometimes it's about the fit and who they are. But with Josh, we saw a lot of athleticism there and a huge upside. How about Josh Fryer's development at left tackle throughout the course of the spring? How, how did you come out of those practices and how the summer flow him? Yeah, I felt I felt like Josh um, showed flashes, um, wore down a little bit, and so one of the challenges we had was for him to change his body and lose some weight. He's done that. I think he's like at 315 now, which is I think where, where Mick wants him. And, and so if, if he can sustain, then, then then he can play with anybody in the country. Um, and so that's why this, this summer was so important to him. And, and I think he's done that. I think he's put in the work so that now it's time to go compete. Ryan, when you mentioned Luke Montgomery, how, how realistic is it for any true freshman to be in a competition to maybe start and tackle Big Ten? He's in the competition right now. I told him the other day, I said, I know you're a true freshman, but you came here to play. So, uh, you know, that should be your mentality. Now, whether you play in the first game or not, you know, I don't know. Maybe you don't play this year. But I just, you know, I see things in him. We see things in him that are very encouraging. And I think everything you invest in, Luke, you're going to get back. He has all the traits that you look for in a really good offensive lineman. Um, but, you know, maybe, maybe it's game three. Maybe it's game four. Maybe it's, I don't know when it's going to be. But uh, he's got a huge upside as well. Ryan, when it comes to play calling duties, as you look back at the spring, how close do you feel like you are to making that decision about the yield, whether you're going to give that to, to Ryan? Uh, Brian and I got to talk about that as we get into the first week or two of, of, of camp. We haven't really sat down and talked about it. You know, I'd like, to, certainly would like for him the opportunity to, to make some play, you know, do some play calling. How much? We got to figure that part of it out. Um, but, you know, we'll, we'll get a feel for that as we get back into here in August. But, um, you know, that's. I think the big thing about being an offensive coordinator is it isn't always about the play calling. It is it is just the day-to-day -day organization of your staff, the corrections, the installs, the game plan. Like there's so many things that come with being a coordinator. And, and one of the last things is play calling. Now there is certain things that you learn over the time about play calling that you can, you can learn from, but uh, the organization and day-to-day -day stuff is, is way more important. And, and, and that's all great stuff that he's working through now. Is the quarterback battle in that conversation matter at all in terms of when you pick a quarterback with the play call situation and making sure that they're hearing one voice? Um, I, I think it's always good to have one voice, and I think that's why I've always wanted to be in the quarterback room. Um, I think as, as Corey's grown, you know, he's been able to do more and more. But it is always good to have the play caller and the quarterback on the same page. Absolutely. Brian, for you personally to, to think about kind of delegating some of the play calling stuff, and you've called plays for a lot of years, is that how weird a decision is that for you? Is it a hard decision to make? Yeah. It's obviously something you've done for yeah. yeah, I mean, it's, it's yeah. I mean, it, listen, I think, you know, Brian, is, is, you know, the next logical for prog progression for him is to, is to be the coordinator and to, you know, um, you know, take the next step that way. But, but yeah, it's something I just, you know, have always been a part of and always done. And so, um, you know, whether it's together or, you know, however it works out, you know, it's, it's something that, you know, I've always just, you know, had a handle on and, and, um, you know, you, you have experiences too. You'll learn every year about things, you know? And so, um, yeah, it'll, it won't be easy for me to walk away from. Ryan, what made you guys want to bring in? 
yeah, it, uh, Taiwan uh, was somebody that played basketball, I mean, played um, baseball and football, and then did a little bit of that going into college. We felt like if he just focused on football, that uh, he could play at a high level. Similar in the recruiting, we said the same thing. He was coming out of Burton Catholic, um, and, and he played some last year. And the clips that we saw when he's down at Ole Miss playing, you know, he did a nice job on film. So you know, he enters the portal, and um, you know that was an opportunity for you know for us to go grab somebody who we think you know can be in the program for multiple years, who can develop once he just focuses on football. Yeah, I, I do. Um, it, it's been about just the competing part of it. I think that when uh, I mentioned this earlier, if, if you and I are in a competition, let's say we're doing push-ups and I do, you know, 20 and you do, you know, you're, you're going to do, okay. But well, you're going to try to do 21, right? And then I, yeah, I'm going to try to do 22 and we're going to go back and forth and competition is, is how you continually get better. And it's one thing to work hard. It's another thing to compete. So, so much of what we've done has been around competing. And we've been competing in every single thing we can possibly do. And, and we're counting on that to make the difference in the end so that, you know, we can find those one or two plays because, you know, in those matchup games, it comes down to one or two of those plays, you know, and, and those game altering plays can be the difference between winning and losing games. I'd say it's more, I'd say it's more, you know, it's pretty extreme. I mean, we, we, we overdid it and overemphasized it. I mean, we've always done a couple competitions, as you know, but I'd say that it's pretty extreme. Right, two years ago, we sat here and you said that in five years, you are afraid you wouldn't recognize college football. And thinking now that's only been two years, right. how much the game has changed, how do you feel about where things are heading for the sport? Yeah, I, I you know, so I guess we're three years away from that moment. Yeah, I mean, it's, uh, it's a lot different now than it was two years ago. I mean, if you had sit here and said that this is what it's going to look like, you know, probably somebody tell you you're crazy. Um, I, I think we need some help in certain areas for sure. I think we need help. Um, you know, not every college football program across the country is the same. You know, whether it's Division Three, Division Two, FCS, FBS, different conferences. Um, you know, they all experience different things. They come from different perspectives, they're different sizes, they have different challenges. So I think we need flexibility throughout the country to be able to make rules that apply to, you know, certain groups of football teams. How much have you and Gene and the university been involved in the conversations with NIL as far as the legislation goes through Congress? I mean, is it just you guys, Michigan, <laughs> one state, I mean, is it the whole conference? How, is that, how involved are you being? Yeah, um, you know, Gene's always, you know, very much involved with all of that. I know, you know, the new commissioner's doing a great job of getting involved with all of that. Um, and, you know, I think, like you said, some of the bigger universities are involved probably more than others. But um, I know at the Big Ten, we're, we're, we're involved with it. Ryan, sometimes I would hear the thick of the season and you're in the weeds. It's hard to have a big picture look. Coming off the summer, a little time to reflect. Michigan lost. You're right there with Georgia the whole time. The state of your recruiting, like, where is this program? How how do you feel about this program right now? For yep. You? Yeah, I, you know, when you lose that the last game of the regular season, it's it's devastating. It is, and then you regroup and you swing as hard as you can against Georgia, and you know, come a player too short, and you know, if, if, again, one of those plays goes another way, we're sitting here having a different conversation, but it didn't. So, you know, you have to trust the process and. But when you look at the team that we have, you look at the guys that we've recruited, you look at the experience we have coming back, the leadership, the coaching staff, our culture right now, uh, you know, the fact that we've been to the CFP three of the last four years, which I think we're the only team to do that in the last four years. Um, you look at the way we're recruiting, you look at you know so many different things, you know, those boxes get checked. And so you have to trust the process. You have to believe in the process. You have to grow every year. You have to learn every year. I mean, I think our program's as healthy as it's ever been, you know, in terms of the type of people we're bringing in, the talent we're bringing in, the coaching staff that we have. So, you know, we just got to keep growing and learning. Um, you know, one of the things that, you know, every year you have to grow and, and get stronger and, and learn from the things that, you know, you didn't do the year before. And, and that's, 
you know, whether it's Jim Knowles, the second year as a coordinator, or me as the head coach, or, um, you know, Justin Fry as the old line coach, or Mark Pantone in year, whatever he is, is the, you know, um, you know GM here at Ohio State. Everybody learns, Mick learns, you know, um, you know, our, our sports medicine learns, you know, about maybe how, you know, an injury was handled. They're just diff- different things you learn every year and you grow. But I think when you take a step back and you just look at our program and how things are being run and who we have in the program and where it's projecting and, and the success we've had in a lot of different areas, you know, the, you know, we look at our, our GPAs as a, as a team when you look at, you know, so many different things in the leadership areas. I mean, there's just so many things that, you know, you can check those boxes. So it would just motivates you even more to go win that last game of the year so that you can continue to build. Right, I guess it all hang out against Georgia, too, though, offensively think that will endure? Do you, do you see that carrying through that? Not that y'all aren't ever timid, but... No, you're right. I, I, I think... Just from a tax standpoint. Yeah, and I think when you go back a little bit on that, the last game of the regular season, the rivalry game, you know, we just didn't respond well in the second half when some of those big hits happened, and then we had that long penalty, the holding, and then the 15-yarder, the which was almost like a 50-yard 50, 50 penalty. Like, we didn't respond great in the second half of the, that, that game, and... <coughs> And I think coming into the Georgia game, we're like, no matter what happens, we're just going to swing and we're not going to worry about what if or anything like that. And so you, I think you felt that aggressiveness from all of us, including me. Um, you know, when you put so much into that game, like so many people do, and the minute, you know, it goes a little bit off course, you know, you know, you have to just stick with it and you can't flinch. And, and so uh, I think you felt that a little bit in the Georgia game. I felt that throughout the whole off season, and now it's going to continue against Indiana this, this year. Yeah, and then and then build as the season goes on because those games get bigger and bigger. I guess. Right. Yeah, I, you know, I just you try to identify the areas that are like the hot spots, the hot tickets. You know, the things that are um, you know causing the most problems for everybody across the country. The three areas that I've identified: one, you know, the guns. You know, there's just shootings constantly in you know across the country in Columbus. You know, we, we just lost Carnell's mom. Um, so it, it's just something that, you know, I talk to our guys about all the time. Um, you know, the second one is gambling. You, know, you look at that that right now is across the country. We just saw somebody else, I think, in the NFL, um, you know, get suspended. That's a big deal. Um, and, and then speeding, you know, getting behind the wheel of a car and, and going too fast or getting themselves in accidents. So, you know, that... You know, we could we can name a, a list of about 15 of them, but but like it seems like those three right now are the ones that come up on your phone the most right now, and so you try to do the best you can to talk to the guys about that to make sure that they're avoiding you know some of those things. Yeah, I guess in all these other things, how much more of your time is spent Yeah, I, I, more more now. Um, you know, not that we've changed anything, but you know, with with the portal the way it is, you know, you, you probably spend a little bit more time with your team. Not that you're recruiting your own players, you're not doing that, but you're communicating with them, you're talking to them, you're making sure that they understand where they stand within the program. Um, and, and, you know, with NIL, there's certainly a lot more people involved, you know, with, with with the program. You have the collectives, you have different things. Not that we're, we're super involved with that, but there are fundraisers. Um, I've done probably more fundraising this year than I've ever done. Uh, you've seen that probably. Um, just a lot more awareness of, you know, getting the word out to normalize what NIL means for Ohio State. Um, so there's there's a lot more of that this spring. Right, I guess so, do, 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 do you think that next year like, as far as compensation or Yeah, I mean, it, we could probably list about four different ways it could look. Um, collective bargaining, you know, there's just so many different ways that you can look at it. I think the tricky thing is there's n- really no um, benchmark for this. We can't let, well, why don't we do it like, you know, this? You know, it's hard to do when it comes to the, the compensation and everything with the players, um, you know, you have to make them employees if you're going to do that. And that comes with a whole other set of issues. So, um, you know, I don't really know exactly how it's going to shake. I think eventually you're going to get into something where there is some sort of collective bargaining agreement, some sort of a player's union, and that will somehow, you know, get us down the road of at least having something in place that, you know, we, we feel like we can grab onto. Because right now there's not much to grab onto. I guess it's the same thing Yeah, I was willing to uh, auction off the first call of the Indiana game this year on the Buckeye Cruise for Cancer, but I decided against it. Um, 
figured that was going to be some sort of rules violation. Um, no, we're, we're we're trying to figure out all kinds of different ways. I think we've been creative about it. Um, you know, we're doing a lot of different things that uh, you know I think are for the first time. Um, again, I think you've seen us not be maybe the first people to do things that are extreme or put ourselves out there, but do it in a first class way, a classy way, do it the way that you know Buckeye Nation can be proud of. That you know we're doing it the right way to make sure we give our players what they deserve, but we're also not getting crazy and out in front of it. Um, trying to be thoughtful. Um, I think we've made a lot of progress in the last year. Well, the same you're talking about the Michigan game versus the Georgia game. Yeah. Just in the aftermath of those games, it feels like after the Michigan game, there wasn't a lot of like, momentum, I guess. And then after the Georgia game, it felt like there was a lot of momentum despite being a loss. Like, how do you compartmentalize it? Yeah. Yes, we got this momentum heading into the offseason. Oddly, it came in a loss. I, I think everybody was trying to process all of that. You know, I didn't mean one of them. You know, there's just a range of emotions. You go from devastation to, you know, um, you know, coming to play away from being in the national championship, possibly winning it. You know, it's like, woo, what just happened? You know, and, and um, I just know that, that there's a group of guys that are coming back. I think having Tommy come back, having Cade come back, having Xavier come back, having Mayan come back. Those are guys that have to make some decisions. They decided to come back. Uh, it's allowed us to be a little bit more of a veteran team than we've had in the past. And so this off season, they've, they've, they've driven it, our leaders. That's just a few of the guys. I mean, there's a lot of other guys that have done a great job leadership wise. They've, they've driven the off season. And so I think you can just feel that coming from our players. I think you can just feel the confidence. Um, and, you know, I think our guys are anxious to get back on the field and play. Um, and I don't know how else to describe that because I, I can't really probably verbalize what you're talking about, but I, I hear what you're saying. Ryan, you mentioned Luke Montgomery. Who are some of the other freshmen who have impressed you this offseason? I think we've recruited a really good batch. Um, when you say freshmen, I, you know, Carnell Tate, I guess, is still a freshman, although all those guys who came at mid-year, I told them they're not a freshman anymore uh, at their uh, exit meetings coming out of the spring spring practice. So all those guys are, are now considered sophomores in my eyes. The guys who came in this summer, um, I got to give Lincoln credit. You know, he's coming from South Dakota, doesn't have a huge background of playing quarterback, but he's jumped right in, hasn't been overwhelmed. He's athletic. He's got a long way to go, but but he's got a bright future ahead of him. Uh, Arvell Reese is very very talented. You no, know, he's got, got a lot to learn. And for a lot of the guys that came in this summer, they have a lot to learn. Calvin Simpson Hunt is going to be. Uh, he's got a really bright future ahead of him. Um, I hate to sit here and tell them they're going to be great players because you know they have to put all the work in to get there, but. But when you're looking at their ability level and, you know, some of the guys that have come in, we're excited about all of them. Um, it's hard to pick one out because, you know, my phone's going to ring and someone's parents going to ask me why he didn't mention my son. But, um, but, but, you know, I think some of those guys are going to have a chance to get on the field, though, this year. Uh, the new TV deal, how is it going to affect the league, you think, and also how is it going to benefit your school, your team? I, you know, I think we can um, – agree that you know monetarily it's going to be huge um, but also just exposure in recruiting you know um, you know the the west coast markets is you know we recruit a lot on the west coast you know we recruit nationally so um, certainly the, the monetary part is going to be great but also the exposure in recruiting right well, you've uh, you answered or not answered probably any possible question about the quarterbacks Going into camp, what's one thing you you need to see from Kyle McCord and one thing you need to see from Devin Brown to give them a chance to start? Yeah, I think it's 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 the competition. It's when when the play needs to be made, does it get made? It's one thing to throw, you know, a completion in seven on seven on a Tuesday, second period of the you know, whatever. It's another thing on third and four during a scrimmage to make that throw or make that red zone throw and catch on third and two. Um, you don't get to see them play with their legs in practice because they're not live. We're not going to do that. So you don't know that till the game. But those th those plays, those game where the, you know, for the quarterback, third down, red zone, uh, a play action shot, you can't miss that shot. I mean, that's, you know, th those plays have to be made because, you know, we've worked really hard to set up that one play. If that play isn't made, then we're not going to score touchdowns here. So I can't give you, like, one thing, but I just – you know those really important plays that have to be made, and those are the ones that separate you from scoring touchdowns and being as good as we've been on offense and just being average. And when you said it was very close earlier, is it 50-50 close? Is it 51-49, or is it 
And in your mind, is there yeah. somebody, not that I expect you to tell us, but is there somebody that at least has an edge in your mind going into camp? I think the only thing that, that Kyle has an edge right now, just in terms of all of it, is just that he's been here for another year. So he's got you know more and more reps under his belt. But I, I don't have it as a percentage right now. I, I'm, I'm interested to see what you know what these first couple weeks look like. You know, Devin get a, didn't get a chance to play in the spring game. So I would have really liked to see him play in that, just in front of the stadium and all that. That was disappointing for him, for all of us. Um, so no real evaluation on that. Um, but they both done done a great job. Their bodies are changed. I think you see if you see them, you'll be like, wow! They, and literally, you can you can physically see the change. So you know, we'll, we'll see. I don't have a percentage right now. Well, they each get like kind of like first two reps, like kind of the way they were. Yeah. And stuff like that. Yeah. Coach, you mentioned a, a talented returning offensive player like Martin Harrison Jr. Here. You must have some awareness that defenses are going to try to do whatever they can to stop him. But yeah. also, you've got to get Martin Harrison Jr. Well, what's the balance? That of acknowledging, hey, that's how they're going to deal with him. We've got to get all the other guys versus we have to do whatever we can yeah. to get him open and make sure he's full. Yeah, you know, we talked about it yesterday as a staff. You know, we can't at the end of the game look down at the, the you know, the, the stat sheet here and say, well, Marvin touched it one or once or twice. That's not acceptable. You know, we have to figure out ways to get him the ball. But at the same time, like you said, if Marvin's four and three by one to the boundary, you know, they got to double team him. Like. <laughs> There's not a lot of people that can cover him. It's just there are probably not some people in the NFL maybe that can cover him. He's that talented of a player. You know, we're very fortunate to have him. So what does that mean? Well, there's going to be times where he's going to dictate coverage. And there's also other times where Mecca's going to dictate coverage. I mean, he's had one of the more productive years last year than anybody in Ohio State history. Like, this is a really good player. And same thing with Travion at tailback. So, you know, it, it's going to be interesting to see how teams play us. Um, but there's going to be times where, you know, the quarterback's going to have to find the one-on-one. And, and that's part of it. Um, but we also need to do a great job in the offensive staff of finding ways to get touches to our playmakers. Coach, you mentioned prepping and talking about the Michigan game, you know, every day every practice. But what's the line for a coach to do those things and, like you said, not let them beat you twice? And even though it's 365 days a year, you do have 11 other games before that. Yeah. No, it's, it's a great question. You know, it's something we talk about a lot. But we're not going to change what we do and how we prepare. Um, you know, there's some things we talked about that uh, we need to get done in that game. You know, I'm not going to get into all those things now, but we, we have to. Um, and so we, we looked long and hard at, at the whole game and figured out the areas that we've got to do a better job specifically. Um, but just just the emphasis every day needs to be there. Right. Remember the new Big Ten scheduling model? You guys aren't going to play Penn State every year like you have in the past. How do you feel about that moving forward and not having a game? Yeah, it's it's you know they they they're a very good team and it's going to be another challenge. You know we got them at home this year, but um, they got a great team coming back and every year it's a battle, it just is. And you know we've built up some some great games over the years, so um, you know we love playing them. It's we love playing them because they're a great team. We don't love playing them because it's hard. I mean, it, but at the same time, I, I think. You know, the win that we had there this year, probably that in the Notre Dame game allowed us the opportunity to play in the playoffs. So I think that's a part of it as well. You know, you have to get some of those games under your belt. But um, but, but they do a great job, and it's it's always a game that comes down to the last drive of the game. All right, I know you guys take a lot of pride in the culture you built at Ohio State. So this isn't necessarily an Ohio State-specific question. But when something happens like it did at Western, as a head coach in college football, do you look at your culture and say, what can I, what can I change, or how much, how much more do I have to focus on this program? Yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm sure you, you know you, you, you know the question. I mean, you know the answer to that. Yeah, I mean, um, you know, immediately, all of a sudden, you, you got to look hard and make sure that there's nothing going on with, with your crowd. And um, you know, so immediately, you know, I have a staff meeting and talk about how you know if there if there's something that's going on, you know, I need to know about. It needs to be told to me. You know, and. So you, you go back through that again. Not that you know we don't talk about those things. We do, but it's just it's something that you know brings it to the forefront. Talk to the team about how it's unacceptable and, and you know all the things that come with it. And um, so you just try to make sure you have everything in place so that something like that doesn't happen. Um, you know, especially when it's you know something that just happened you know recently. Right. Can you add a little confidence for practice? Have you seen that same thing in the summer? And what do you expect from him? Yeah, I think he's 250 something right now. 255. He looks great. Um, you know, we, we need Kenyatta to play for us this year and have production, but um, that he looks like an NFL player right now. Ryan, what do you 
think of the Big Ten's new scheduling format going forward in Michigan being Ohio State's only Yeah, I think I think because the, the, the Big Ten has such a long tradition and there's so many um, you know, historic games and rivalries for some teams and then others maybe not as much. It, it, it was a challenge, I think, to put this together and not have the East and the West anymore. You're tying in UCLA, you're tying in USC. Um, I, I, there's a lot of things at play here. So uh, I think they did the best they could try to put that all together. Um, you know, I know that one of the um, goals was to try to get as many teams as possible in the playoffs. So, you know, when you're looking at that, you want to have certain teams that you play on a yearly basis, but at the same time, you also want to try to do the best you can to get as many guys into the playoffs. And, you know, people see it from different points of view. Um, I'm glad we still have the rivalry game. Um, you know, I, I do think we should consider, you know, when we play it, just because you, know, you may end up playing them back to back weeks, which would be awkward. I know that, um, you know, we need to consider the tradition, but I think it's worth a conversation on when, you know, because um, I think that's significant just on how the season plays out. But, um, but other than that, you know, I think I think they did the best they could with it. I think the good news is they didn't build a, a schedule that is locked in for a long period of time. I think that they can, you know, do this for a couple of years, reevaluate, and then have the flexibility to, to change it up if if needed. So, are you good with not playing Penn State every year going forward? Yeah, uh, you know, it doesn't really matter at this point. The decision's been made. Uh, I think, um, you know, we we like playing Penn State. You know, they're they're a great team, and you know, it's one of those games where you, know, you find out where you're at year in and year out. And um, uh, do I like playing them? I don't I mean, not really, but because they're a very good team. But at the same time, I think the rivalry has been excellent. I think it's good for college football to see Penn State and Ohio State play. Well, Mr. Clear, what's your personal preference about playing Michigan, potentially not playing them the last regular season game? What's your personal preference? I just think that the, the tradition's so strong and it's been going on for so long. I think, you know, it's something that you know has to happen for Ohio State, and um, you know, and I think you know we got to play the game every year. Last game. Is it oh yeah, where it is, I, is. I think yeah, yeah I, I think we, we should. I think it's worth a long discussion about where that game should be should be placed. You know, I think if if it was the same way as it was this past year, we'd be playing back to back games, and then who knows, maybe even playing again in the playoffs. So um, I just think that needs to be taken into consideration. Not that we should move it, but I think it's worth talking about. Just real quick on that idea. Yeah. Yeah, well, it, it's, um, you know, the game could not, you know, have an impact on, you know, a whole bunch in terms of if both teams are, are in the Big Ten playoff, our Big Ten championship game already, you know, then, you know, could it minimize the game? That That's my concern. Even if you played it, you know, week 11, week 10, no matter what, it's going to matter. Um but but if you know you're playing in the, in the in the Big Ten championship game already, you know it, it could be something that we haven't experienced before. Before that's all. Um, so I, again, I think it's worth a discussion. So what's your kind of discussion to your knowledge yet about any of that? Or you're just yeah, you yeah. No, I, I know that they're they're talking about it. I just don't think that any hard decisions have been made. I don't think they're going to be made here real real soon. So I just want to be part of those those conversations. Yeah, theoretically, you could play them three times in a row. Yeah. I mean, that, that would diminish the original one. I mean, you aren't going well, to talk about that. I, I think as we're talking it through, you know, you're ultimately going to want to get into the final. We're getting way ahead of ourselves right now, yeah. but you know, you want you want to be in the the final four. You want to be in the the top four, so you have a buy in that first week. So it, it it would matter, but just not the way that you and I know the game. And so, well, it's going to be a new experience, you know. Um, but let's just talk about this upcoming year. We got a long way to go before we get there. Do you feel like there's like a cedar right now? Are you more concerned about your starting right tackle than you are your starting quarterback? Can you rank them in those in those ways? Is that fair? Yeah, I know what you're saying. Um, that's a good question. I don't know if I have the answer to that. I mean, yeah, I'm concerned about both just because you don't know. And that's when you go into a first game, conference first game on the road, 
your biggest concern are the, are the the unknowns, and the unknowns are those guys haven't played. So, yeah, I mean, they're they're both concerning. And again, only just because they haven't played. You know, I mean, they might be the best players on the team. I don't know, but yeah, you you worry about those type of things. Yeah. Are you all the changes coming to college football in 2024? Do you feel like there's a little bit of a cloud? Here? You're going to go about your day-to-day -day business. You're going to play 12 games and play for a national championship. There is a little bit of a cloud. Yeah, I hear what you're saying. I just think that you know whatever the rules are, the rules are, and then you know they're gonna they're gonna uh, crown a champion and. We got the rivalry game. We got the Big Ten championship. We got the national championship. So it's all right there. It's just a matter of, you know, the format. And so the format is what it is this year, and we're just going to go after it. Brian, how would you feel about the season against Michigan? You guys are throwing some stuff at me right now. But I'm just going to worry about beating Indiana right now, but <laughs> it'd be crazy. Where do they rank as in terms of the best duos you got? Yeah, I mean, I don't think you can say there's anybody better. Now they have to they have to produce for another year because they only have really one year of production. But if you look at what they did last year, sophomores, and certainly they had CJ and CJ was great. And but man, for for two sophomores, I mean that was as good of a. But they got to do it again, you know. And I think that's part of what you're asking, you know, guys who do it for multiple years in a row, not just for a year. I mean, Jackson is one of the most talented receivers we have, but he was hurt last year, so the production wasn't there. Where Garrett and Chris, you know, those guys, um, you know, did it for multiple years. So if they can put another year together this year, you know, they, they might be one of the better ones in the history of Ohio State, yeah. if not the best. Talking about that first, in, the first game of the season, what are your thoughts about that first game with Indiana? And you say you guys have been growing every single day. Where do you expect your team to be right at that first game of the season? I expect to be playing at a high level, um, you know, picking up from where we left off last year. Uh, I expect our defense to um, be in a, a year experience, a year um, more salty. Uh, I'm excited to see some of the new faces out there playing and, um, ex you know, expect to see, you know, one of the more explosive offenses in the country and, um, you know, quarterback that is going to, you know, Put the ball into the right spot on time not to do anything extraordinary early on but just you know find a way to compete and win games and uh, a team that's going to play tough and compete at a high level play with an edge play fast you know, that's what we're looking for in that first game and then you know winning winning the first game on a road because we have to go on a road a bunch this season and that, that's that's good you know go on a road and, and see where we're at so those are all things we'll be looking for. Coach, you talked about the, I hate to ask another question about the 12-team playoffs, but um, with the Big Ten having 16 and with, as many people have said, the goal to get as many as you can in the playoff, does that start to feel like the NFL a little bit in, in terms of 16 teams and almost like the AFC with with that playoff race and how that's going to be? Yeah, I don't think that's a bad way to look at it since they've been doing it for a long time and have a lot of experience. So, yeah, I, I think... I think you can make an argument for a lot of different things where, you know, you put pods together and you have divisions and, and the divisions go on and all that stuff. I mean, we're, we could talk about this for hours about different things, but yeah, I mean, I, that part of it, I think that there 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 is ways to compare to the NFL and how they've done things in the past because they have such a great experience. I think when you're talking about, you know, paying players in NIL, I think it's hard to compare to the NFL because it's just a whole different model. But I think when you're trying to put together a playoff system makes sense because they have such experience in this area. Brian, do you have a time frame set when you want the offensive line to be fully set? And are you open to moving pieces around as the season starts? Yeah, I can see us moving some pieces around as time goes on. You know, you don't want to. You'd like to have five that you feel great about. But I, I just think there's enough talent and enough competition in that room that you're going to see us try to give guys opportunities in game <clears throat> to grade out as champions and, and earn starter status. You know, I never thought we'd have an opportunity to hire him. Um, you know, Brian brought it up because he coached Brian in, in Miami and uh, spoke with Joe for a little while, and, and the conversation went on and on. It took a couple of months probably for it all to, to play out. He had a lot of opportunities. O line coach of the Dallas Cowboys, coordinator for the Super Bowl team, head coach for the Dolphins. Um, a perfect hire and that's in an analyst role um, he's been unbelievable he's got a tremendous amount of experience he's got a great personality just in terms of how he handles 
helping some of the younger coaches, helping some of the other players, just just being around the program. Um, and he's been great for me, just somebody who's been through as a head coach, what it's like, the point of view. Um, and I'm really, really fortunate to have Joe part of the program this year. How much can an analyst impact the team? We, we don't see them yeah. as much, so how, how much does that We've, we've done some with the analyst where some of them have just been younger guys who have done a lot of the QC work. This is a little bit different. You know, we, we've, you know Todd Fitch is on staff now. Um, you know, Joe Philbin, we brought in Mike Dawson, uh, somebody that I worked with, you know, when he was in the NFL. Um, and so, you know, Rob Keyes, somebody who was the head coach at Finley. These are some guys who have a little bit more experience who have been around different roles. Um, you know, they, they can have an impact on the other coaches because that sometimes they can coach the coaches. They can kind of help those guys up. They can help with game planning. Uh, they can bring perspective that maybe, you know, a younger coach can't because they've seen things before. And so I think that balance of having experience and then youth is a, is a really good balance to have. I think the youth, you know, the younger guys with the energy and the connection to the players is, is great. And then you have the guys who have been through a lot of worse and they've seen a lot of things. And, and so I, I, that's something that I've tried to do in the last couple of years is strike that balance. And you know, I said, say this staff is probably the closest that we've done to, the, to hitting that. Two more questions, folks. Who is? It was everybody who was out this spring and revised ready for fall camp. Do you have anything that's weakening revised going in? Uh, Reese Stocksdale is the only one that has a long term. Yeah, so he had, he had the ACL, so he'll, he'll be out until like bowl practice. Um, you guys know the update on Zach. Herb Street, you know he'll be he'll be out indefinitely right now. Uh, still be on the team, still going to report to camp and, and be a part of it, but he won't be able to get on the field. Um, uh, until we until you know we get some sort of an update on on his condition, yeah, yeah. Um, but everybody else, yeah, everybody else is, is full go. Evan, hey Ryan, your, your conversation. Evan Pryor, full go. Your, your conversation with Tony Petiti. How much is he asking you guys what the league needs to do to best position you and the other teams in this league to compete for national championships? He's been the only team that's played for one or won one in the CFP or BCS area. Yeah, he, um, he's been great uh, so far to work with. Um, it seems like, you know, what he says he's going to do, he's going to do. And, um, you know, looking forward to having more of those conversations. There's a lot coming at him right now, and he's trying to figure it out. But he's already got a couple things done. Um, and, you know, his long-term goals all look in line with what we need as a conference. But, um, but no, his communication has been good. Uh, we talk about NIL and funding and everything. The real reason is because of the is, is the pay for play, is that even going to be um, You know, I think, you know, just... One of, the, one of the biggest challenges we have right now <clears throat> in the you know, recruiting, whether it's the portal or in high school, is this is inducement. And uh, you know, it's, it's real, it's out there right now, and I think that's probably the area that if you said, give me the one, number one thing that we gotta get straightened out NIL, it's that. And um, you know, it's because it's so gray and it's hard to enforce, it's out there. And so, you know, to me, if you had to say the number one area that we got to identify and get nailed down and, and, and try to, you know, put some guardrails around it, be that area right there. Good. Let's go. Uh, yeah. So uh, he, he's a medical.